Hey y'all, Instinct Survival is coming to you again with another Two Tip Tuesday. This time we'll be talking about whipping and frapping and how they apply and why do they deserve two tips, right? Overall, what exactly is whipping and frapping? And so when we look at just exactly what it's used for, it is designed to make your, your, your cordage tight in some fashion, okay? That's the overall goal in it. Now whipping, and we'll talk about that first, whipping, you can see an example as the, as the handle for my, uh, my tomahawk right here. And what it, we've done is actually wrapped the cord around it and then whipped it to make sure that it tightens or binds up on itself. And we've done it both for the handle here, that's lasted about two and a half years, the end of the cordage here to make sure it didn't come undone, also lasts about two and a half years. And then last weekend, I finally popped uh, the whip that I had on here because it was a loop. So I wanted to redo that. It was coming loose. I've been uh, scrubbing it on trees enough. This is my ridge line. Um, so I've scrubbed it on enough trees and used enough that uh, we needed to go in and get it done. So when it came uh, apart, too easy, too easy to do, right? And so what we'll do is we'll get a close up on exactly how to do those things. Now the second one is actually what's called frapping and frapping is actually a secondary part to a lash or lashing that you may do. So whether it's with a tripod, which we'll show you in a uh, future video, or whether what I have here is a nice square lash, uh, the what the frapping does is actually tighten that down or bind it down to ensure that it's not gonna go anywhere. And the reason for that, the reason for any of this is to ensure stability and longevity. And when we look at those two factors, that's why it deserved two tips, right? That's why we deserved it deserved to have the tips in here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reposition the camera and we're gonna go through exactly how to whip and how to frap. Okay, I'm gonna go into square lashings. Maybe we'll cover that in something else. So we'll talk a little bit about it, but not really get into a whole lot of detail on square lashings. That could change. So if you hear any construction in the background, hey guys, it's because uh, they're rebuilding some, uh, some fences over here where we had uh, Hurricane Irma come through. It sounds kind of weird in Georgia, but hey, we had a Hurricane Irma come through. And one um, uh, footnote, if you will, or the story, if you will, uh, about frapping is I actually did that on my tripod and the tripod I left it standing because I wanted to see what would happen even with the high winds and I will tell you this some of you seen the picture on Instagram it stood I didn't have to put it back up that stood still the entire time now whether it was because of the frapping because of the tripod lashing because of the placement in the yard there's a lot of trees around and it kind of encompasses everything I didn't even have a tarp move I think it flipped one time and that was it so my thought is because we didn't have enough wind in this section so something to be said about that in my camp and camp area so let me reposition the camera. We'll talk about whipping, then we'll talk about frapping, and then we'll go from there, okay? Okay guys, so the thing about whipping is there's a couple of things that I do up front just to make sure that we get it right, if you will. Number one is I put a knot in the end of it, and the reason being is because when we pull this tight, I need something to pull on, okay? now. I know we haven't discussed exactly why we're pulling it tight and what the purpose is, so let's go through that. First off, I'm going to take my cord and I'm actually going to put it back on itself and this is a way to take a straight cord and make a loop if you will. So first off, I've got that in there and then what you do is you take and do the same thing on the other end, alright? Um, what I do is I go up the cord and you form a loop, okay? So you got to have this loop in here, otherwise it will not work. Then you take the other piece, or the other end, if you will, and you start wrapping the cord on the opposite end of the loop. Now, why is that the case? And I'll, I'll, as we go through this, I'll start explaining why we do this. Now, I'm using an artificial sinew for those of you that care. And if we look at it, um, I want to be able to tighten it down. And so why am I using artificial sinew? Uh, number one is I want to make sure it binds to itself. So I had the option of either this or a tarred bank line. And so what I go and do is just tighten this down. Okay, and that's all I do is just go in, tighten it down on each other, make sure I keep the knot out of the way. And I just keep wrapping it, wrapping it, wrapping it. Okay, too easy. Uh, unless it gets caught on itself, which is, you know, kind of the benefit, if you will. We'll get that cord out of the way. And we just keep going on itself. Now let's get this done. We're going to wrap it around a couple of times. 
And yes, for all of you that want to comment, oh, why didn't you go to the other end and wrap it from that end? Um, because I didn't want to. That's why. Um, I'll switch off hands just based off of what angle I'm trying to put on it or going in and making sure that I've got it tight enough. Now, in looking at this, what you see is kind of a pattern, right? You see that rounded pattern going around, and all we're doing is literally wrapping this around the cords, okay, the, the, the two sides, if you will. And then what I do is each round, I actually tighten it up a little bit. I have it wrapped around my finger just to make sure I get it tight enough. And I'll go in and, and do it a couple of rounds just to make sure, again, I get it tight as I want it. And then the last round, so you can see I've got a, a pretty good bit on there. I've still got a little bit of the cord left there. That's fine. What I do is you take the other end, your loose end, if you will, and we're not going to talk about tag end, work end. I run it through the loop that I, that I created at the beginning. Tighten it down. And then what happens is, and this is where I told you I need to take that knot, right? I need to have that knot in there. What you do is you actually pull that and you'll see it pulling that end up into the wrapped area. Now, why do you do that? Well, what it does is it takes that and binds it up and it tightens it down. So now I can go in and cut that end and cut this end and this will not come undone. I mean, this is, it's pretty hard, uh, hard as it is. So you can see it's really, really uh, solid. Uh, I'm gonna yank on it a few more times just to pull it down a little bit further. What you don't want to do, let's go with the, the do's and the don'ts, right? The do, make sure you pull it in tight. What you don't want to do is pull that other end all the way through. Now, can you? It's not going to hurt anything. Um, me, I like it to where it's hidden in there, and the reason being is because then I don't have to worry about it snagging on something, fraying, or fill in the blank. The other option in this case was I could have done it all the way down to where it covered up this piece um, to maybe protect it a little bit more, uh, but it's one of those things where I didn't really care, okay? So like I said, now all I've got to do is just cut the two pieces and I'm good to go. So that right there is whipping. Very easy, very simple to use. I said I was going to get you a close-up of this one. That's actually wax cotton thread um, that I use for that. That's been going for quite a while, so you can see that, all right? Fair enough. All right, so let's put this off to the side and let's talk about frapping. Now, frapping might require you to use one other tool. That one other tool is one of my favorites and we've talked about them before, a toggle. Okay, so what do we do? Now, number one, I've already gone in and, and done a lot of the square lashing uh, around each piece if you will two to three times uh, or sorry three to four times and I pull it tight that's what we do is pull it tight now in this what I will do is I will take and you've seen I've gone over under over under over okay that's the that's the pattern if you will what I do with this other piece is I actually take and I go around okay so I'm going to take this and go around it I'm gonna go around it one more time before I do the magic, okay? The magic is not to drop your stick while you're working on it, but I'll take that toggle and I'll pull on it. And when I say pull on it, if you're using bank line, you can yank on that thing, right? You can yank on it and what that does is it tightens it down. Now, what we saw is a little bit of play in these sticks a moment ago. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around one more time because when I do a, a, a frapping, I like it to be nice and snug. And again, I wanna make sure that I'm not having to do this again in another week, if you will. All right, so let's do that. Let me tighten it up with my toggle. All right, now if we look at it, there ain't a whole lot of play in there, all right? It doesn't move too well. So that is the important part is if you're doing a square lashing and you'll notice there was no notches in this, I actually did my square lashing and then I wrapped it around and did frapping. If it still moves, let's go with the theory there, right? It still moves a little more than what I'm comfortable with. 
then you do it some more. You do it until it doesn't move. And I've had some of these where they didn't move two seconds, or two inches rather, they didn't move two uh, uh, millimeters, if you will, and they certainly wouldn't move any, you know, any smaller than that. They just wouldn't move at all. So that's the benefit of this, is making sure that this is tight, and it's not gonna go anywhere. Now, I'm actually cranking on one end of this, um, so it does have a little bit of play, if it were a serious project, I'd go around it about two more times to make sure that we go in and get that bound in tighter. And then the only thing left after that is to just tie it off. I take this, um, I find the, the work end of my timber hinch, there we go, um, and then I'll just tie this off. So no big deal, okay? Okay guys, there you go. So the two tips this week were whipping and frapping. If we put it all into perspective, what is it about? It's about utilizing your rope and being able to tighten it down to serve a purpose, okay? Now, as you're going through and you're practicing your whipping, as you're practicing your frapping, if you don't like it, then do it again, not a problem. Do it in your backyard, do it in your house. Uh, tie the chairs together and try that way. <laughs> Whatever you need to do to start practicing and doing that. Guys, overall, it's one of those things. Now, I know there's gonna be one question across the board. Bill, what cordage do you use and why? The reality is this. I use the, the artificial sinew because that's what I wanted. I wanted something a little slippery so I could tighten it up real tight and it would tighten over a period of time as it starts drying out. The tar bank line, I use that because I wanted it to bind on itself and become even tighter. I don't want to have to redo this stuff, so I utilize the perfect tool or what I feel is the perfect tool for the perfect situation. The reality comes down to, I've used paracord, as you can see paracord for whipping. I've used all kinds of different things. The reality comes down to this. The best rope, the best cordage to use when you're doing this is the one you have with you. If you've got poly rope and that's all you got, then so be it. Not a problem, I've used it, works great. If all you've got is artificial sinew, then great. You saw that I actually used uh, wax cotton floss that, uh, that you could use for candles or something like that because that's what I had at the time. When I started learning this, that's two years, two and a half years ago, that's when I started learning it. So my, my challenge to you, right, is to try whipping. Tell me what you think. Don't forget to comment below, let me know. Secondly, try frapping. After you do your lashing, then let me know. Tell me how you liked it. Tell me what's going on. If it's something that, hey, just didn't work out right, then so be it, okay? We'll work through this together. Please, if you've got questions, let me know. Hey, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and certainly don't forget to put in comments down below. Wanna hear from you, wanna hear how you're doing, and hey, if it's even a check-in from the hurricanes, then so be it. Hey guys, until next time, use your instincts to survive. Thanks for watching.